How do you do, fellow kids? It is I, JT. Now, I want to say off the bat that I was cautiously optimistic going into this movie. Everything I saw in the trailer made me think that this movie was going to be a mess, and it absolutely was a mess. For the most part, the trailers made me curious in how they were going to to um, make Palpatine part of the story. And from the opening crawl, I knew that this wasn't going to go well because they weren't going to try to make him part of the story. They're just going to shove it in your face and hope you, you know, move on, um, which isn't great. And if I had to guess why they justified such an insane movie, it would be that because this was the end of the saga, they felt justified in cramming everything uh, anyone has ever wanted to see in, in a Star War onto the screen. I do appreciate that this movie delved into the mysticism of the Force, because for the most part, the films have only touched on Sith or Jedi lore. I only wish that this was set up in the previous films. The opening crawl simply declares that Palpatine is back. No explanation, no plot development that leads up to us, just Palpatine's back and you better be on board. Although, uh, I guess um, if you uh, play Fortnite, there was like uh, the, um, uh, the, the Palpatine's message was broadcast in the game or something, which, uh, barf, okay? Um, Palpatine survived the Death Star exploding which I guess can be explained by the Plagueis power over death, but we've never seen anyone exercise this power. Now we're being asked to suspend our disbelief that this power can allow you to survive a nuclear explosion that obliterated the second Death Star. Um, <clears throat> there was a jar full of Snokes, so I guess he was a clone, but who is he a clone of? And I still think this is a weak explanation of who Snoke is. I think Hux had a lot of potential. Domino Gleason is a great actor, and I loved the over-the-top Hitler version of his character from The Force Awakens. He was so hateable. The Last Jedi kind of made him a clown, so I understand why he was killed off early in the movie, and then his role was taken over by Richard E. Grant, who was pretty good, I guess. Um... After The Force Awakens, I didn't really anticipate a redemption storyline or bendemption for Kylo Ren. Once the trailers for The Last Jedi came out, it was clear that they were exploring a redemption for Kylo. I thought this could work if Snoke became the main villain, but at the end of The Last Jedi, Snoke is dead and Kylo seems to have doubled down on the dark side. I actually think that his turn back to the light side was handled in a fairly convincing way, but it leaves a void for the villain role. So now I can see why they went for Papa Palpatine. So my next point is super weapons. They went from the Death Star to the Death Star 2 to a planet-sized Death Star to every ship is a Death Star. I'm not going to lie, this trope was tired in The Force Awakens, and I'm a little sick of planet killers. I mean, can't they come up with another idea, some other threat? I mean, for God's sakes, um, they, they, they just need to come up with a different idea. I guess it's okay that the Knights of Ren aren't really important, but it would have been more satisfying if they they served some narrative purpose. It just further proves that they were more interested in cramming stuff onto the screen rather than creating a compelling story. So I think the most contentious point is that Rey is a Palpatine. And I was hoping that they would avoid retconning The Last Jedi. Now, I felt that The Last Jedi had retconned The Force Awakens, and that was kind of what I disliked most about The Last Jedi, is because it took me out of the movies and and made me think, oh my god, they're just making up this as they go along, and this is just another nail in that coffin. The explanation that Kylo meant that they were junk traders because they chose to be drunk traders falls flat. In fact, the second time I watched this movie, I laughed out loud. If he was trying to convince Rey to join him, he would have originally said, you're the granddaughter of Emperor Palpatine, join me, it is your destiny. Overall, I have mixed feelings about the sequel trilogy. I like the new characters, and I think they were close to telling a compelling story, they just didn't have the same unified direction they had when George Lucas was leading the company, for better or worse. 
if I had to characterize the prequels, it was an interesting story that wasn't implemented well versus the sequel trilogy that was a mess of a story that was well filmed, acted, and directed. The message that I want to send to Disney is that Star Wars fans want new compelling stories. They don't want Star Wars to be a facsimile of Marvel. The heroes don't need to be overpowered and the villains don't need to be immortal super beings. Just tell good stories with relatable characters. Do better, Disney. You're the biggest entertainment brand and we expect more. Now that I've gotten that off my chest, I do have plans to see it again. My five-year-old son wasn't bothered by the poor storytelling, and that's good enough for me. For now.